I am getting the on-air sign, which means we are live, chilling in the showroom, got a little bit different view today. We did a pick your top live session yesterday, and um, the rig was still in here in the showroom, and I came in super late, didn't even know if I was going to make my live, and so last minute we figured we would just leave the rig in here and do the live from the showroom. So giving you guys a little bit different look. Um, I don't have a customer guitar because nobody put one here for me. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to block the view of those tops. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can grab a customer guitar. What do you think, Flock? You think yeah. you could grab me something sick? Yeah, I got it. Um, so we're going to get a customer guitar, and uh, I don't have a deal of the live. Um, I did a big pick your top live session yesterday, um, which... I typically do one in April. I've done a couple in April before this year. I'm just doing the one. Um, so I did my pick your top live uh, tax return top Tuesday, you know, getting it around your tax return time, or hopefully you're getting a tax return. And then um, traditionally I've done one um, for Black Friday. So uh, if you missed the one yesterday, um, you know, maybe you can uh, wait till Black Friday and grab a top or, I mean, shit, they're right here. I still have my templates. I mean, I guess I could technically lay them out for you if you wanted to grab one of these too. So you could just call my guys uh, if you wanted to grab a top that's behind me. Uh, I think they're still on the Instagram maybe. Um, you should be able to see examples of what's still left. Um, but we're going to do a lot of questions today. Um, and, you know, after I show off this guitar, custom shop is going great. Uh, we're quoting about 8 to 14 weeks. Just depends on what you're looking to purchase as far as how, uh, I should say, 8 to 20 weeks, um, depending on how you know complicated the build is, if there's any Jeff to do finished stuff. Of course, those always take longer, um, especially this time of year. You know, uh, I do a lot of racing, a lot of automotive racing, and um, I'm getting ready to leave this weekend. I leave tomorrow, actually after work, uh, going up to Northern California for a race. That's a pro race, a pro solo. And then um, I'll be back in the office next week. And then I go again the following Thursday, same spot. I can't see it from here because it's all dark, but it's going to be beautiful. And oh, cool. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Dude. That's rad. Look at this one. Yeah. Let me get my uh, peepers on so I can. Uh, yeah, the tag's on the back. Yeah. Saw that. So we got this one for Matthew. Look at that beautiful rainbow metal flake guitar. I don't know if it's catching the light right or not. Brandon, are we doing it? It looks good? pretty cool, yeah. Yeah. So this is something we've done once a year, these rainbow metal flakes. And so these are finishing up. And they're starting to ship out. We started shipping them out uh, about a week ago. Look at that beauty. She's a real beaut, Clark. Put the tag down there. Love how these A2s look with the just the little hints of bevel in the two extra spots. I should say the one extra spot from the normal areas down here. And then just a little bit smaller bevel, a little bit smaller bevel, different body shape than the regular Aries. But what a gorgeous build, um, an A27H in the rainbow metal flake. So rad one. So that is the customer guitar. Abalone inlays, Abalone logo, just really dialed in. Whoever uh, spec this out for the customer, maybe the customer ordered it online. Did a, oh, you did, Flock? <laughs> did a really good job. Chrome covered pickups, black pole pieces, Abalone cap knobs, just a really, really sick build. Um, love how that thing came out. Uh, so then we're uh, racing the following weekend as well, same place, a regular event. And uh, then there's, I think, a couple local events, and it's Nebraska, back-to-back -back Memorial Weekend. So with all those events that I'm going to be gone for, obviously I'm not here to work on your guitars. So when you order a Jeff to do finish or a Jeff to do anything, I really do all the work. You know, there's not like, oh, yeah, Jeff just kind of does it. No, I do all of it. So, um, you know, it's just going to be extra time for that. Um, that's it, you know? I mean, if we were uh, trying to have a pretty face with a guitar, we'd probably start with a prettier face than this one, you know? So I'm not just uh, not just here for the eye candy, <laughs> or lack thereof, I should say. Um, 
I actually work on these things and I love working on them. So, um, you know, there's just, there are days where I come in and I don't get to work on a single guitar. You know, I have other things going on. I could have an artist coming in, prepping for that. I have meetings. I'm working with fill in the blank. And, uh, you know, there's days where I don't get to work on anything. But my best days in the shop, I assure you, are when I'm working on your guitar. So I love doing that. That's a little update here at the shop. Um, you know, if you guys want to, we can open up for some questions now and uh, get to some questions. And, you know, if you guys see one of these tops, you like them. Um, I, I, you know, I got templates here. I can lay them out. So that's kind of what we do on a pick your top session. If you missed yesterday or you're not familiar with what that is, you're not only getting the top that you see, you're getting a better deal. I'm going to sketch it out too for you. Um, so that you can actually see what it looks like. I'll hold it up. You could screenshot it, all that. But anyhow, that's not what this is about. It's just we happen to be in here today, and uh, I was working on my race car all um, pretty much all night yesterday and all day today until about 1.30, and then I finally got into the shop. Um, so, yeah, exciting. Excited to uh, go up and race and see how the updates are going to do. Uh, the car we made some huge improvements on, and we we're making actual horsepower again. We were really struggling with the car for the past almost four years. The car has not been very fast, um, accelerating wise, and uh, I think we're back. So I'm super excited about that. Um, I feel kind of stupid for you know getting us in the situation we are in. You know we have the car handling good, so the times have still been quick but they haven't been as fast as, uh, as I feel like we should be. So hopefully uh, we'll be seeing that this weekend. But uh, let's, do some, let's do some questions. Nick is asking, what body wood would Jeff pair with that Koa top? It looks great. Ooh, uh, that Koa top? Um, I would go either mahogany or a swamp ash or a roasted swamp ash. I think that would look awesome. I guess... I dynoed on Friday and I didn't give you guys an update. So I'm going to do a real quick update. Um, we dynoed and we have a, a turbo sensor. So I'm a contract driver for Garrett Honeywell, Garrett Turbo Chargers, probably one of the biggest turbo companies in the world. I've been a driver for them since, gosh, I think 2014. Uh, so shit, 10 years now and won a bunch of championships on their turbos. And we finally started monitoring turbo speed and we were realizing that at about eight pounds of boost, we were overspinning the turbo. The reason why is we had a very restrictive intercooler. We took that off, put a, the proper sized intercooler on there, um, not from a cooling standpoint, just from a flow, like air flow through it. And we put that on there and our turbo speed, we were able to run 15 pounds of boost now. And um, our turbo speed went way down. So we were overspinning the, the turbo, which was causing a bunch of back pressure, and the car was making no power. We were down about 60 horsepower to the wheels on the normal boost settings that I run. I know my competitors are probably not stoked on that, but that's why the car is, it truly hasn't been very fast. I mean, when we're coming off a corner, the car would still have decent power at like 3,000 RPM because that's before the the motor starts really ch getting choked by the uh, restrictive intercooler. So it would kind of come off the corner okay, and then it would fall on its face. And I'm going, why is this thing so slow? So now we're up about 60 horsepower to the wheels when we need it most. When we, you're, not even, you're not even driving. You're literally just floored in a straight line. We've picked up over 60 horsepower to the wheels. So we did some acceleration testing on, and simulated some, uh, just some sections of one of the courses we had last year. And each accelerating section for a 30 mile an hour pull was worth three and a half tenths of a second, each 30 mile an hour delta. Just, and you're just going in a straight line. Three tenths, three tenths, three tenths, three tenths. You do that three, four times, you know, it's worth over a second. So uh, excited to see where the, where the car actually goes. Cause I felt like the car has not been fast since 2020 before I went with the small intercooler like an idiot. So the car was really fast in 2020, and then we've just not been fast since. So excited. 
Next question is, any chance of a short-scale option for the A2? Um, well, are you talking about an A2 bass or an A2 guitar? Uh, we did put up the ability for you guys to get a 24 and 3 quarter on an A2. And I said if I got five of them within a week, I would do it. And I could not get five sales within one week, so we didn't do it. So I don't think so. I think we had two people that were like, I'll throw down. And that was it after a week. Jesse is asking, I've heard of the color on a raw tone finish rubbing off. Would doing a blacked out ash finish have better longevity? I've never seen um, the color rubbing off like that. I think that's going to be, you know, subject to the player, right? I mean, you can wear through gloss finishes, you know, some people really dig in, they're really aggressive. I've seen, you know, bodies get dented out over time, you know, like quarter inch in because people are just so aggressive. Um, it just depends on your, your playing style, you know, um, if you really dig in and I mean, I guess that can be a problem, but I've never seen it. Brandon, have you ever seen a raw tone like wear through at all? I've seen a couple guys wear through it in spots. Okay. Yeah. Typically like, you know, where they pick. Yeah, sure. Um, I honestly don't think anywhere else besides there is where yeah. I've really seen it. Yeah, it's someone digging in a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Matt is asking, can we get the zebra black and white pickups with black pull pieces on the white coil and chrome on the black coil? I don't see why not. We should be able to do that. Is it possible to get a hollow ring K inlay to match the other ring inlays? A what? So a hollow K, so just an outline of a K. Oh, no. Uh-uh. Sorry. Yeah, I'd have to be... Um, to do that and have it look proper, you'd have to really increase the size, and then it wouldn't fit in that space anymore. Jasco Plumbing is asking, did that mm -hmm. retro solo sell yesterday? I didn't get to watch the whole live. What's up, brother? It sure did. How you been, man? I know you've gotten some cool uh, builds from us lately. I had a few in the works that took a while. Chris is asking, do you do the Caliburst finishes or does Casey do them? Uh, Casey does those. Yeah, I just do the Jeff to do finishes, um, you know, like Arctic, um, Reverse Monster Burst. You know, there's just all, there's a bunch of different ones that I do that are my finishes. But Casey does everything else. So he's doing the majority of what we do here. Does an amazing job, man. I mean, I love having Casey here. He's got such a great attitude, loves being here. Um, and he's so talented. You know, I think I don't probably really need to tell you how talented he is. You guys can see that. Um, and what's cool about Casey, that this is something you guys don't know, is how much he cares. Like, I see how mad he gets when something doesn't go perfect or right, and that shows me how much he cares. So when he's working on your stuff, I mean, there's so much attention to detail, and, you know, any little thing goes wrong, he gets pissed and, you know, we figure it out, fix it, whatever, you know, because not every single time every guitar is going to come out perfect. It just doesn't work like that, you know, and that's really where I feel like um, we've come a long way you know, with our customer service department, um, you know, we've always had the caring in our finish department, but, you know, now the customer service department has just really stepped it up huge. Such, such a big deal, you know, the quality control all the way throughout. And then at the end, you know, um, Cal is just doing an awesome job. Love having Cal here. John is asking, why aren't roasted flame maple necks available for neck through? Uh, our oven is not long enough to fit the uh, the neck blanks in there. The other reason, too, to be completely honest, is as you roast wood, sometimes you can get a twist, and um, with a like a a bolt on neck, it's not a big deal. We can get rid of that twist by you know sanding it, planing it. It's gone, right? Um, but on a neck through that long, you're not going to be able to get rid of it. So you'd have to have a way of really being able to strap it down in there. Um, and I just think that'd be a really hard thing to do. 
What makes finishes like Lambo Blue and Gold Metallic more expensive than other metallic finishes? That's a great question. Um, some of the metallic finishes have multiple steps to them, uh, and so that would make them more expensive. Can you tell us about the process of doing the rainbow flakes? It looks hard to do. Yeah, that's uh, really something. Casey does all of these, and it's all about getting the proper amount of coverage. And when I say proper amount, there's such thing as too much. You put too much on, it doesn't look as good. Obviously, you don't put enough on, it doesn't look as good. So we do these in batches, um, typically around 30 of them every year. And, uh, you know, Casey does an awesome job on them, but they're a lot of work. You know, once you put that heavy metal flake on, you still have to clear it, kind of bury that metal flake, sand it, clear it again, sand it, clear it again. It's a lot of labor. So it's not just the labor of shooting the rainbow um, or any metal flake. It's also the labor afterwards, because once we sand them, normally you would go ahead and uh, polish it, you'd buff it out and it'd be done. Not with these. And you got to clear it again. doesn't sound like a big deal, but if I can only clear 20 guitars in a day, well, if some of those are rainbows, they got to be cleared multiple times. Well, I'm losing out on being able to ship that guitar in a, you know, a week or two after it's cleared. So, you know, it is all about how much time you spend on something, how many steps are in a process. You know, I hate to really even delve into it too much because we probably aren't charging enough for these metal flakes, to be honest. They should probably be another four or 500 if we were to really look at it and go, okay, this is what we need to get. Um, but thankfully for you guys, we don't do that. You know, we just kind of just kind of wing it here. Can you get the tritium pickups on a modern J base? Yeah, we could do that for you. Call my guys. Let's do it. Woo! Has anyone ordered a nine string with a scalloped fingerboard? Uh, no, that doesn't exist. Um, I don't know that we could do a scalloped board because what would happen is as that scallop goes such a wide range, it's going to get really low and shallow at the outer edges. And we barely, just barely have thick enough material to have, you know, our inlays uh, set in the, the fretboard, you know, the side dots. I don't think that's something we could do, to be honest. We have to involve like reprogramming quite a bit and, you know, to sell one for the lifetime of the nine string guitar, I don't think would be worth it, to be honest. What is the top at the top left? Top left is a Royal Ebony. Oh, top left. Uh, Pale Moon Ebony. That's, I think, I think you got it right. Is my left or your left? I don't know. I think you got it right. Yeah. Can we pick out one of those tops now and save it for a future build? You cannot. No, that's not how these work. Um, could you imagine, like, you know, just the chaos that would cause if I allowed people just to, oh, yeah, you could pick out a top, put a down payment, and some point in the next couple months? No, I mean, I have over a thousand instruments in the works here. Um, you know, a, a small builder that maybe is working on 15, 20 guitars, that's not a big deal for him to have one or two tops kind of deposit in and off to the side here. That's just, that's just, that'd be chaos to be completely honest. So I, I can't do that. I'm sorry. I hope you understand. When ordering a scallop, is the entire board scalloped or just above the 12th fret? Well, it depends. So we do both ways. We've done all um, 24, and then we've done 12 and higher, and we've even done 20 and higher. If you ever did another swirl run, what color, what color combos do you think you would explore? Dude, I have no clue. <laughs> uh, what's up, Chels? We have a customer question on that top left one that they were asking about, the TPRE, I think. Yeah. Sure, absolutely it will. Cool, right on. Um, yeah, I have no clue on the swirls, like what I would do. I, I don't know. Um, you know, originally I said I would never do swirls. Then, you know, I delved into it, pulled my hair out, did them. And then I did a second run because I wanted to offer the pink 
green and black uh, that was supposed to go on the first. And am I going to do swirls again? I, I don't know. I have no idea. They're a lot of work. They really are. Kind of depends on my hands and how my hands are doing. Enrico Gasparoni mm -hmm. is asking, which of these tops would you do on a Josh meter? Would that Koa one work? What's up, Enrico? Well, none of them, brother, because the Josh meters are really thick uh, model, and none of these will work on that thickness. So sorry. Um, they would look amazing on a Josh meter for sure, but unfortunately, no can do. My favorite... Um, look on a Josh meter. I mean, my own personal guitar. I like solid colors. I just think they look amazing. And I like the matching back. I like the whole thing painted one solid color. That's my jam. Maybe with some painted binding on it, but that's me. Is the Tim Miller available with a 20 inch fingerboard radius and high output pickups? Absolutely. Yeah. That would be something that if we did those specs, you'd have to call in and it'd make the build non-returnable because we're deviating from what the artist has set for us to offer. But of course we can do that for you. Um, but it, you would not be able to say, hey, I get why Tim didn't want a 20 inch radius. I think I'd like to return it. You wouldn't be able to do that. So if you stay within the specs available, um, then it has a 10 day trial period. But once you go out of those, we're offering flexibility to still build you something, but not, not give you that uh, return policy on it. Here's an interesting one. How much would I have to pay you to do a Tim Miller multi-scale seven string? Oh man, it, it'd be a lot more than you'd be willing to pay, to be completely honest. Uh, it sounds easy, uh, but there's a lot going on. Um, you know, number one, you're going from a 22 fret to a 24 fret, you're going from a six to a seven, you're going from a non-multi-scale to a multi-scale. You know, the body you'd have to grow, th there's a lot of work. It would be thousands and thousands of dollars extra um, to even have a conversation. I would call it five grand extra just on top of whatever the guitar costs, just to even consider it. And even then it, it wouldn't be worth it financially for us. If your race car was a Star Wars character, who would it be? Oh, oh man. Um, a Star Wars character? Well, it would be the Falcon um, for sure. That's not really a character. It's a vehicle, right? It's, uh, it's the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. That's, uh, we call it the Beast because it is, uh, it's got a lot of power. It will get away from you really easy. doesn't have any power steering. No power brakes, no ABS, no traction control, no nannies, no sissies, none of that bullshit. It's a raw car, and it's either fast because you're fast, or it's not fast because you're not fast. There's nothing helping you drive. It's not like a Tesla. You go take it out on the track, and you run pretty quick, even though you suck. It doesn't work like that. I've driven those Teslas, and it's like you get out of them on, on a track, and you're like, you just shake your head. It's, I don't know. I'm glad to see them getting banned in different forms of motorsports because it's not driving anymore. Yes, a top badass driver will still go faster than someone not very good, but it's not the normal Delta um, that we've seen in traditional cars. And um, it's kind of sad to see, to be honest. <clears throat> What finish would you put on that black limba top? Would a honey burst look good? That could look really cool. Yeah, because you got um, the orange hues in there with the orange streaks. I think that could look really cool. There's two nice orange lines in there. Will the headless instruments eventually get the new neck heel carve? Oh, you're talking about for bolt-ons. Uh, yeah, they have it. A lot of them have it, yeah. Joe Brooks is asking, did that $600 Crescent flame top sell? Nope. That's why it's still right there, brother. Yeah, I knew it wasn't going to sell. I knew there was no way it was selling. Just shows me not to do it, you know? 
<laughs> prove myself right again. Brian Stewart says, Jeff, your 60 horsepower doesn't scare me. I'm coming for you next weekend. Hell yeah. What's up, brother? Yeah, man. Um, it's it's crazy like how how bad the car had been. Um and even when we raced in Vegas, uh the car was a little better, but we were having a lot of issues and we found out our issues. So um that's sorted now. We actually lost an engine in Vegas, and so we figured out what happened. And now I feel really good about where the motor is um, at this point and where our engine program is. And I had kind of lost sight of it. But um, in a little car like that, it's, it's not just the power, it's the throttle response. The thing didn't have throttle response, too. It's, it's like the 60 horsepower doesn't sound like a lot. But when you're going from like 280 to 340, that's huge. And that's just the same boost. That's not even when I turned the boost up. I couldn't even turn it up. So we were making 285 at Nationals to the wheels. That's all we were making, 285 at Nationals last year. And the car now, when I turn it all the way up, makes just under 400 to the wheels. So I'm just comparing... Same lower boost setting because I ran in cold, kind of shitty conditions, so I had the boost down. Um, and, uh, you know, even when I, when I turned it up, it just didn't make any difference because it was kind of not, it wouldn't go past. It didn't matter if I ran 9 pounds or I ran 15. It was the same amount of power. It changed like 2 horsepower. That was it. Now, when you go from 9 to 15, you get about a 70 horsepower change. So now our car turned all the way down, makes 330 to the wheels. Instead of when the girls ran it, my wife and my daughter was only making 260. That's all it was making. It was making like what a demodified car would make, um, but weighing an extra 300 pounds and no throttle response. So it was just, just a bad all around setup. Ben is asking, have you considered offering the Bigsby on a 550 for a prepaid non-return? Um, I think we still have programming for that, but I don't believe I have Bigsby's. Um, you could call. Uh, the guy I would recommend working with is Flock. Uh, of course, you'd have to do a prepaid, and Flock would be able to check to see if we have any Bigsby's. If we don't, I wouldn't be able to do it for you, but if I do have a couple floating around here, uh, then... I'd take a look at it for you, and we could we could build one for you. Robert is asking, would you do a color over that Royal Ebony top? No, I wouldn't. I would probably go with like a raw tone on that. I think that would look really nice. A little bit of that open grainness, just seal it enough to protect it and have that kind of uh, expensive look, if you will. <clears throat> it's my sister-in-law's birthday today, so I got dinner tonight. So I'm excited about that, going for some Korean barbecue, taking her out. Yeah. Is there a reason why the specs on the Zeus Acoustic are limited on the builder? Why the specs are limited? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, why the, Why are there such limited options on the builder? Oh, there you go. Why they're limited options. So the specs are probably still there where you can read what the specs are. Um, options, the reason why it's limited is because a lot of them are going to be the raw tone finish. That's going to be our standard. And if you want to deviate from that, there's a lot of things we don't do as a raw tone. So you'd have to pay to gloss it at that point. So you can call my guys if you want to get a Zeus acoustic with different options. Maybe you want an all black one, gloss. Call my guys. We can do different stuff. It's just that model is we sell mo most of them as a raw tone an open, you know, kind of an open pour finish because it really fits that look and sound. Are the nut slots cut differently for nines and tens? Uh, yeah. Anytime we set up a guitar, yeah, we're going to have uh, everything set up based on what strings we're putting in. I called in earlier today to claim one of those 5A flame tops. I'm super excited for it. Huge thanks to the Kiesel team. Oh, that's so awesome. Well, thank you for getting in on that. I know a lot of people called in um, today and got tops, and uh, that's so rad. 
um, you know, super successful, love doing this for you guys. Uh, you know, traditionally we would do like, I'd have like 20 tops on like a tax return top, you know, Tuesday or whatever. And we would typically, you know, sell like right around 15. Sometimes we would sell out. And so this time I had 35 and I think we're down to what, like 14 behind us. So pretty awesome. I think we sold 21 tops. So that's really cool. And it was all the expensive ones sold first, you know, the more expensive tops. So that was cool. Looking forward to seeing the carbon fiber one, how that turns out, the you know metal flake infused one. It's going to be really neat. And those Tim Millers we sold. We sold a few Tim Millers. It's going to be cool. All the builds are going to come out really neat. How long are the build times on a K-series? Man, that is, that's, that's one I don't want to touch because um, they're going to be longer. I would say 20 weeks minimum. And in some cases, they're taking uh, 40 uh, 40 plus weeks just really depends. Um, sometimes guys will order flame maple necks and cause it's a neck through, I don't have a lot of them. So I'm out of them. Um, master grade, you know, and you got to find the right neck blank for the right build and got to order that. And then it's got to go through the, the kiln treating, you know, the thermal treating process. And so they can take a while just finishing up with one that is, I think going to be really cool. I'm excited about it. Uh, I think hopefully the customer really likes it. It was a little bit of creative freedom that I took on it because uh, it's it's different than what the customer... It was a photo match finish. Um, well, you'll see it. It's I think it's really sick. I'm really excited about it. All right, we're at 30 minutes and we got a decent amount of questions left. How many more do you want to do? Why don't we do speed questions and we'll just go for a few minutes. So... Your question's important. I still love you, but I'm going to do a quick yes, no, maybe, I don't know type of answer. Just quick like that. All right. Is Rich Light more or less reactive to weather changes? Less. What was the model nylon string you made for Tosa Nabasi? An S1. How's the action going to be set up from the, fra from the factory? Amazing. <laughs> Would you do an HS configuration on a DC lefty? Yes. Call. Is it possible to do a one solid piece master grade top? Yes. Have you ever looked at Myrtle wood for tops? Yes, I have some. Would you do a JB200 with a mahogany body? Yes. What's in the rear diff for traction? I'm in between diffs right now, so I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. I mean, I know what's in there, but I don't know what's going to stay in there. On an HSH 7-string, could you do beryllium humbuckers in a lithium single coil? Yeah. When's the next shop walk? Yes. Has anyone ever ordered a super high grade top just to cover it in a solid color? Yes. For a prepaid build, could I get a decked trim for an A2? And two is a special run based off of racing with special inlays slash paint. I don't know what he means by that. You're gonna have to call about the decked, possibly. And that sounds cool. I don't know. Maybe someday. If an Imperial Purple was a standard option, what top wood would you pick? And also raw tone or gloss? Flame Maple, gloss. How much would the Predator Vision paint job cost? Lots. What would be your ultimate 80s flashy guitar and finish? Predator. Yeah, Predator Vision's pretty dope. <laughs> yeah. Would you consider offering spruce tops on the builder? No. I have them, though. Call. What is your favorite figured wood? Flame Maple's probably the most... 
gives us the most variety of working with. So probably flame maple. Do you still do the black dream finish? Yes. Can you do raw tone on zero Cote and Royal Ebony tops? Yes. Can you do HSH on a Theos? Yes. Do you do student discounts? No. Is a semi-hollow base something you'd consider in the future? No. What fingerboard would you pair with the Royal Ebony top? Rich Light. Are these tops still the same prices from yesterday? Yes. Uh, last question. Any possible... Uh, any possibility for the Leia as a base or for a Zeus neck through base? Uh, no plans for either. Well, that is all the time we have today. Thank you for hanging out. Um, what a good, uh, what a good time! What a good day! Um, I will check you guys out next week for the uh, live Q and A. Um, probably not doing anything live before then. I got a uh, race I'm going out of town for and uh, catching up on builds. So on that note, if you see a top you dig, call my guys, grab it. I'm out. Later.